pleasant good night to each and every one of you and i greet you in the wonderful and the powerful name of our risen lord and savior jesus christ it is truly a joy and a privilege to be with you here once more on a tuesday night as we fellowship together as we exalt the king of kings and the lord of lords and we worship his holy name amen i'm excited about worshiping god and i'm excited about giving god praise and thanks tonight hallelujah amen before we get into worship let us just look to the lord in prayer as we acknowledge him heavenly father eternal righteous god i come before you today in no other name but the name of our lord and savior jesus christ and lord we do thank you oh god for your bountiful blessings for lord the many things that you have done and you will continue to do lord i pray oh god that you will help us dear father and give us wisdom and understanding help us dear lord god that we will see truth there lord we will understand truth god that we will know what you desire of us continue to bless and minister to us as we worship the lord tonight as we give glory and honor to you i pray that your presence will move among us oh god and i pray oh father that you will receive our praise as a, a sweet offering oh god I, I ask that you will have your way tonight father even as we go to your word and we study your word give us wisdom and give us understanding tonight Father, in the name of Jesus, I give praise and I give thanks to you. Have your way, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you ready to worship the Lord? Oh, bless God. Well, you know, let's just join in as we uh, welcome the worshipers as they come to lead us in a time of worship, a time of singing and rejoicing in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Glory be unto you. How wonderful and marvelous is that holy name, Jesus Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Oh, we just give you praise. Marvelous name, Jesus. Glory be unto you, Lord. Faith 
faithfulness Stand the test of time It's good to give thanks It's good to give thanks To God our Maker Sing our praise Sing our praise To the Lord Most High To the Lord Most High And you, O oh Lord you hold on. True life changer. Are the true life changer? Yes, Lord. And now we sing at the work. At the work of your hands. For the Lord is good. His mercy lasts forever. For the Lord is good, His mercy lasts forever, His faithfulness stands the test of time. Sing your love, hallelujah. Your love, your love, your love endures forever, your joy, your joy. Joy, there's nothing better. Your peace, your peace, your peace is like a river you raise. Sing your love. Your love, your love, your love endures forever. Your joy, your joy, your joy, there's nothing better. Your peace, your peace, your peace is like a river you raise. Sing for the Lord is good. And for the Lord is good His mercy lasts forever Hallelujah His faithfulness Is stand the test of time And for the Lord is good His mercy lasts forever Yes, Jesus His faithfulness Your love, your love, your love endures forever. Your joy, your joy, your joy, there's nothing better. Your peace, your peace, your peace is like a river you raise. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. How beautiful your name is, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Nothing compares to that powerful name of Jesus Christ. You are worthy. You are the word at the beginning. One we God the Lord most high Your hidden glory in creation And now revealed in you our Christ What a beautiful name it is What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus Christ my King, what a beautiful name it is, and nothing compares to this, what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. You didn't want, you didn't want to live under that. So Jesus, you broke heaven down. My sin was great, Lord. My sin was great, the love was greater. And what could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. 
trust that you enjoyed worshiping and exalting the king of kings and the lord of lords tonight amen praise god tonight i want to look at a scripture in uh, john chapter 15 and verse 16 jesus said to the disciples you did not choose me but i chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. That your fruit should remain. And whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. The word of the Lord is blessed tonight. Amen. Now, in this passage of scripture, there are some things that I want to share. But I want to look at the the passage a little bit and and delve into it jesus said you did not choose me but i chose you now 
I know that a lot of times when we talk and we say, well, I came to the Lord and I gave my life to the Lord and I surrendered to the Lord and all of that, it, it has a lot of connotation uh, of I, you know, making the move or I doing this and I doing that. But truth be told, the Bible says that Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. And many a times, you know, we use expression like when I find the Lord or when I found the Lord, you know, the truth is we did not find the Lord because we weren't looking. We weren't really seeking after God. There are few people who sought after God and God revealed himself to them. But most people were going about things their own way, doing their own thing and living their own life. And it is God who chased after us. It is God who pursued us. And uh, after many promptings and convictions, etc., we finally give in and we surrender and we say okay yes lord and so we surrender to the lord but it is actually god who sought after us so jesus said you didn't choose me i chose you now one of the things that we must realize is that if god chose you then you are of some worth or value. God wouldn't just choose any and anything. Or oh, as a matter of fact, when the world look at us, they don't see worth, they don't see value, they, they see sometimes a drunkard, a drug addict, a, a husband, they, they see a washed up person, they see somebody that, you know, um, will not amount to anything. And all they see is what obtains in the natural and the physical. God, on the other hand, he sees beyond that. He goes beyond the natural and beyond the physical. And he don't look at what we are, but rather he looked at what he can make out of us. So when the world look at us and they see nothing, God looks at us and he sees something. You know, um, I, I love to work with my hands and I love to build and make things. And sometimes I would see a piece of old wood or a piece of old metal, you know, and many times when you look at that, there's no promise and that you know it's just something to throw away but but because i have an ability that god has given to me not on my own but ability that god has given to me i could look at that thing that most people would look at and say that's good to throw away and i would see potential in that and i will see what i could make out of that and I believe that God is the same way, that he, he, he looks at what he can make out of the vessels. So when people look at us and they see a drunkard and they see um, a prostitute, as the case may be, or they see, you know, someone of no value and no worth, God looks at us and he sees value and he sees worth because, you know, I believe he prayed himself you know, into looking at us and say, I can make something out of that person. If only I could get that person to surrender and, and, and yield themselves to me, I can make something beautiful out of them. You know, and so it, it has a lot to do with how we perceive ourselves and a lot to do with how God perceives us. And that's why it is important to, for us not to just look at what is in the natural because if we focus only what is on in the natural, 
there is no hope there is no reason to to um be somebody because what we see is a nobody but god when he looks at us he sees somebody and while we look at the present and the past god looks at the the future and so he sees the beautiful gem that he can make out of us if we would surrender our lives to him so he said i did not you did not choose me but i chose you and i appointed you that you should go and bear fruit in other words he's saying i have chosen you because i see the potential in you to do great things i see the potential in you to 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 uh, be what i desire you to be i see the potential in you to make out of you what i desire and he said i have chosen you and appointed you that you would go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit would remain now as to what that fruit is some people say it's the fruit of the spirit some people say it's the fruit of of bringing souls in the kingdom and you know whatever you know other types of fruit they apply to that my my thing is not to focus on the fruit this afternoon or tonight i want to focus on the fact that god chose us and the bible says he ordained us so that we would good bring forth fruit and that our fruit would remain and whatever we ask the father that he's going to give it to us so it is it is very important that we understand understand that now from the beginning of the bible god calls people to work when we look at adam and eve god made them placed them in the garden and he says your job is to till not till the soil but to take care of everything here name the animals you you have dominion over them the fish in the sea and everything so adam and eve's job or responsibility really was to rule you know they, they didn't really have to do laborious work per se but they had to rule they had a responsibility to rule and because they had that responsibility every animal in the kingdom um every animal was subdued to them and they had that power and authority over them so some people get a direct call to a specific work and then you know like moses the political leader or bezalel the stone cutter these men were given specific jobs and specific responsibilities others in the bible you know other bible characters like um, ruth or esther they use their circumstances and people around them to guide them and to help them in their calling you know some people um if people don't push them in a direction they they never come to that place of understanding their calling somebody always have to keep pushing keep prodding keep encouraging them but god have called people since the beginning of time now if you are wondering how can i find uh, my true calling how can i know what god is calling me to do well there are some questions that we need to ask ourselves and if we can ask the ask those questions and find the answers then we would probably be even closer to finding out what the call of god is and so this evening we want to look at the the very first question is what work do i love what work do i love is there something that you care very much about is there you know something that you want to spend as 
much time as possible doing? Is there something that, you know, you uh, say have a passion for? Maybe it is art. You know, a lot of people love to draw and they are skillful at drawing or painting or even playing music. I don't like to draw because I can't. I try it. I'm not very good at it. You know, I could play music. You know, I'm not the best, but I could hold my end, so to speak. You know, so what it is that you love? What kind of work do you love? Do you like to start a company? Do you like political action? Take, for example, a lot of people say, well, Christians should not get into politics. But I believe that that's, that's where we are needed. Because we, as God's children, are responsible for a nation. And uh, if we have godly people who will... Um, use the wisdom of God and make godly choices, then we can steer the nation back to God. So, um, I know a lot of people stay away from the politics because of the compromises that they have to make, etc., etc. Et you know, um, but, you know, what it is that you like to do? Maybe raising children. There are some people who don't like children and then, then some people, they love children. Some people have 12 and 13 and 14 children. Others, on the other hand, say, you know, just one is enough for me. You know, there is no law that says that you have to have X amount or less or whatever. Uh, that has to do with you and your desire and, your, and with your spouse. How much children you all want to have. And so, you know, while some people will put the brakes on that, others will say, you know what come bring them on i love them bring them on you know everybody is not the same you know um or maybe you have a passion or a desire for researching things you know like digging like trying to find out uh trying to understand certain things you know um if you are such a person you will realize that it's the teacher in you that wants to gather information so that you can disseminate that information to other people so um you know there are some things that you would find very fascinating your deepest desire are important to god your deepest desire are important to god right as psalms 37 and verse 4 it says take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart take delight in the Lord and he's going to give you the desires of your heart all right um, sin and complexity of the world mean that you can't just say I'll do what makes me happy it is not about just you Sometimes it's not spot, it's not possible to make a living doing what you like the most, or you have to do it off hours instead. You know, uh, because your job, though it earns a living, may not necessarily be your passion. And so, because of your job you have that job you don't like that job you really don't want to be there but you have no choice because you have to earn a living but your real passion is doing something else and sometimes to fulfill your passion you have to do that off uh working hours on your on your own time you know um in other in other cases what seems to make you happy um it may be bad for you or someone else it takes spiritual wisdom to separate temptation from true desires implanted by god and at the same time your work should not feel like punishment from god you know calling and joy are linked linked to psalms 37 god is probably not calling you to uh, work that you hate you see sometimes you know we look at the work we are involved in and we think that god is punishing us 
no god is not like that god god don't give people work to punish them sometimes it is we end up in those type of jobs because of the choices that we make but it, it's not god's fault and uh, if the people who are influential in our lives have recognized the potentials that we have and steered us in the right direction then you know then we would have been able to to do great things but it is because we haven't had that kind of push and we haven't had that influence then you know we end up doing things that we really don't like right so you need to ask yourself what kind of job do i like what do i like to do and and if you could find out the answer to that that might be an indication to what your calling is the second question is what are my gifts what what are my gifts what kind of gifts do i have see if certain work feels easy to you that may be an indication of your calling think back on your success think back on your work experience what made you particularly useful see you have the you have to look at that think about that what it is that made me particularly useful you see and um, the bible says that god gives his people gifts for accomplishing the work that he wants them to do god will not um expect you to do something and uh, you um he give you a gift for something else no whatever the work or the job that god requires of you he's going to give you the gift to do that and so our calling are closely linked to our giftings our talents our ability our capabilities and and if we could focus on those things what are the things that we like to do what are the things that makes me me what are the things that i do that people take recognition of uh, you know am i am i just a part of the group that nobody really sees or am i part of the group that people sees value in because i have certain gifts talents ability capabilities you know it have some some people are so multi-talented they they can fit in in almost almost any, anything they're very versatile not everybody is like that and and let me tell you those people are the likable ones those are the people that you know um that people usually gravitate towards they want them on their team they want them to be a part of their circle and things like that you see so you have to examine you know what are what are your gifts what what makes you you what makes you special all right in in corinthians it says to each is given the manifestation of the gifts of the spirit for the common good the gifts of the holy spirit are given and it manifests in our lives so that it can profit everybody not just ourselves everybody will profit profit from it if certain work feels easy to you then that might be an indication of the calling that might be something that you know you need to, to look at you need to take um thought about the key about gifts is that god gives them for the common good instead of wondering instead of wondering what job might be best um or might best show off your talents you know think about how your inquiries can best save others you see because a lot of times we think about our our gifts our abilities and how it serves us and makes us look good but our gifts and our talents and abilities not not to make us look good rather it is to to help other people to be a blessing to other people so that we can you know lift we can lift up um those that are um around us and uh, realize that our gifts will contribute to somebody else's life and make them better while others 
other um, somebody else's gift will contribute to our life and make us even better. All right, so we need to think about about these things. Question number three is how can I make a difference in the world around me? How can I make a difference in the world around me? Now, again, like I said earlier on, many times people don't see worth in themselves. But the reality is, how can I make a difference in the, not just the people around, but in the world around me? So if I go in a job, right, most people, they go in a job, their goal and their aim is how to make money. But like I said to you before, you know, your goal should not be how to make money. God will take care of that. You will make money. But if your goal and your focus is to make a difference in that job and, you know, help people to see God in that job, then you're on the right track money will come god will provide for you god will not call you to a task and let you starve no he's going to provide for you all right so you need to um look around and notice something that needs to get uh done you know that might be an indication of what god is calling you to do so don't just stand around and You know, just let time pass you by. Find something to do. Occupy yourself. I remember we were on a job. And on this job, everybody have their specific duties and responsibility. For example, if you're a mason, you're a mason. You don't do anything else. You're a carpenter. You, you know, you do carpentry work. You don't do anything else. If you're a laborer, well, you're a laborer. You are called upon to move here, there, and wherever they desire. And so, we were in the building. We were putting up the building. And so, I was working as a carpenter. So, we were focusing on the building of the structure, the, the boxes, etc. And then, then it came time when the masons had to put up the blocks and so they were putting up the blocks um and not plastering them therefore the blocks had to be very neat so that if you have to cut a half it had to be precise um one half cannot be different from the other half half is half because they're putting up the block pointing it and so when you look at the wall you will see the design of the block and a uniqueness about it and so they had a guy stationed on the machine to cut block. His job was to cut block. Right? That, that, that was his job. The laborers will um, find out from the mason, you know, if they want a block, what size this block need to be cut. Because some it might be six inches, some it might be three inches, four inches, etc., whatever. They'll bring it, he cut it to size and give it. And there came a time on the job where the material um, run short. So they didn't have work for the masons. And instead of keeping them doing nothing, they send the masons home. And so this guy, even though the masons weren't there, he stood up by his block machine because he's a block cutter. His job is to cut block. And so if you don't have any block, he's, he's standing there. And the supervisor came to him and said to him, he said, you know, listen, I want you to go with such and such. They need um, a helper and they need some somebody to assist them and so on. And the guy looked at the supervisor and said, well, you know, I am a block cutter. I am cutting the block and I am here. And the supervisor looked at him and he says, well, you know what we don't have any blocks to cut so since you can't do anything go home and when we get blocks we will call you back you see now now that person they weren't there to contribute to the company they were there just to make make a living their focus was just on making a living 
But you don't just stand around and, and wait for something to happen. You make things happen. Right? So if there's no block to cut, you find something else to do and, and occupy yourself and make yourself um, worthwhile. And so he lost a few weeks. As a matter of fact, they almost did not rehire him because he didn't want to do anything else. You see? Now, you cannot make a difference in your world like that. You have to be able to, to be flexible. Now, I'm not saying the compromise, but you have to be flexible and adjust. Who knows? Maybe in going to do something else, his gifted and talent might have shined in that other area. But you know what? At the end of the day, nobody knew his gifting or his calling. All right? In um, Matthew chapter 25, Jesus, you know, spoke and he said that the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. And you know then um, if you read further, the, the, the disciples said, But Lord, when did we see you? When did we see you naked and, and, and clothe you? And when did we see you hungry and give you food, etc.? And, 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 and Jesus said to them, He said, as much as you did it to these, the least, you have done it unto me. As much as you have done it to those that are suffering and in need, you have done it unto me. You see? So if we want to make an impact in the kingdom of God and, and we want to be useful. We don't pick and choose areas where we get to do what we get to do. No. We uh, um, find things that we can do and make ourselves needful or useful all right are there needs in the world around you that only you can fill you have to ask yourself that because there, there are some things that only you can do and 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 only you can do it the way it needs to be done you know or uh, Issues that feel pressing to you. Are there some things that you know bugs you? Some things that you go to sleep tonight and and you know it's there on your mind that you know somebody needs to do something about this. It doesn't need to be something big or something that you need to quit your job to do, but it it must be something that you have a passion for. A few people will be called to tackle the world's biggest problem, the world's complicated problems. But more people are called to take on small jobs and small problems, you know, that um, are right where they are. Always, always believe that God placed you on a job for a reason, not just to make money. Maybe there's somebody that there that, that really need you and, and you need to see that see um so don't 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 just you know um take things for granted right look around you you know and notice what needs to get done it might be an indication of your calling it might be an indication of what god is you know pushing you to or desiring you to do question number four what supports my family what supports my family now you need to work you need to work to support yourself and your family this you know isn't at odds with your true calling supporting your family is a vital spiritual calling according to the bible but you know you cannot think that 
your calling is wrapped up in your job. Like I said earlier on, many people, they, they don't like the job they're in. But they do it because they need to support their family. You know, I, I, I heard this once that the question was asked to a young man. What is your calling? And he responded by saying, I am a school teacher, but I drive bus for a living. I drive a bus to support my family. But, but who I am? I am a school teacher. You need to answer that question. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you is the, and, and what you do are two different things. And most times when we ask uh, persons, who are you? They say, well, I am a pilot or I am a, a, a police officer. And, I, I am, and they describe what they do and they don't describe who they are. So you have to answer that question. Who are you? What you do for work should I am. Um, what you do for work should ideally meet your family's needs. When you consider potential jobs, think about your current responsibilities as an integral part of your calling see what you do on your job it should meet your family's needs right but consider the potential jobs think about the responsibilities as an integral part of your calling okay so i am working in this company and in this company i am the goofer I am the person that they hired to go for this and go for that and do this and run errands and so on. And many people will see that as a menial job. But it's not necessarily a menial job. Because think about the number of people you will interact with in that company. You build a relationship with these people and you are able to present Jesus to them. You are able to fulfill your calling in that menial job what is what many people will call a menial job you see so you need to look at that many times when we think about calling we only think about church and the positions in the church but everybody can serve in the church you have a church with 200 members in it how, how can you get everybody and appoint them to positions i mean they might serve in other areas but everybody cannot have an official position you see the bible tells us that after the apostles prophets pastors teachers uh gifts of healing miracles and stuff like that it says then there are helps and governments there are other people that call to help and let me tell you there are some people who are very good at that where help is concerned and and let me tell you without them the church will not function the way it's supposed to or the way it does So you, you need to see that. You need to recognize that these people are very important in the church and in the, the work of the ministry. Question number five is, how can I help others through my work? How can I help others through my work? Well, one way to think of calling 
is how you can bless others through your work. How can I be a blessing through my work? You know, I, in the area of, of construction, I don't do it full time now, but ever since I've been involved in construction or anything that I am doing, and there are people around me who may come to assist me, I try my utmost best to teach them something. So that when they leave or they are finished working with me, they would have learned something i don't just i don't just leave them hanging you know because i believe that everybody has the potential to grow and to develop and so i i try my best to help others around me contribute to the needs of the saints you know don't just don't just look at things you know um like i said only to do the bare minimum, right? Try your best. Try your best to help others. Try your best to, to be a blessing to other people. And contribute to the, the needs of the saints. Eh? Extend hospitality to strangers. As Jesus said, bless those who curse you. Bless and do not curse Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. And do not be haughty. Do not be high-minded. But associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. And uh, take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, as far as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. See? So, you and I need to look at ourselves and see how we can be a blessing to the people around us. You can bless people through all kinds of works, including the work of normal relationships. You don't need to work for a non-profit or as an overseer missionary to fulfill your calling. Maybe your career gives you the opportunity to care for people in your company. Or maybe your calling is outside of your work, in your family or even in your community. Listen, don't worry. Jesus offers calling insurance. <laughs> what, whatever or whether or not these questions help you discover God's calling for your work, don't worry. God's most important call is simple. Have faith in Jesus. God's call to follow Christ is at the, at the root of every other calling. If you said yes to life in Christ Jesus, then you've already done the important work. Answering God's primary call makes all the calling in God possible. As I close this evening, I close with Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. It says that all things work together for good to those who love God. Who are called according to his purpose. Let me tell you. God has called you. And don't think for one moment. That you have to have some superior position. Or call in your life. To be meaningful. Start where you are. Start in the small things that God has called you to. Be faithful in those little areas because the Bible says if you are faithful in little, then you will be faithful in much. Look at yourself. Ask yourself, go over these questions again. If you didn't get it all, go over you know, the, the sermon again 
and look at the questions and try and answer them for yourself. It will help you to find God's calling in your life. Father, tonight we thank you, O oh God, for calling us out of darkness and into your marvelous light. We thank you, O oh God, for what you have done and because you have chosen us and ordained us that we will go and bring forth fruit and that our fruit will remain. We pray that you will continue to bless, that you will continue to minister to us. Lord, that we will not take our calling lightly, but we will realize that through us, you can impact the lives of people. You can bring change in the lives of people. I ask that you will touch each and every one of us today, O oh God, that you will minister to us, that we will be what you desire and what you want us to be. I ask that you have your way today, Father, in Jesus' mighty and precious name. I pray, O oh God, for those that are viewing tonight. Lord, I ask, O oh God, for your anointing to break every yoke and to remove every burden to destroy the powers of the enemy. Father, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke every stronghold of the wicked, O oh God. And I pray, O oh God, that you will touch your people, that you're going to bless them, keep them, strengthen them. Father, in the name of Jesus, as I give you thanks and I give you praise today, in Jesus' mighty name amen well praise the lord you know tonight we do thank god for the privilege and the opportunity that we can share you know the word of god with you and i i trust that this word has been a blessing to you and uh, that it will help you to find god's calling in your life amen this is Pastor Ralph Rabluchan of the House of Praise, New Testament Church of God located in La Fortune, saying unto you today that with Jesus, the sky is the limit. There is nothing too great that can stand before you. God bless you tonight.